Harley Davidson. If you don't know that brand name, then you must have recently been thought out from a pre-1903 cryo experiment. Even the citizens of North Korea know the brand. We're here in uh, Harley Davidson along Edsa. And uh, we're here to pick up a nice bike. Hi there, Luigi. Luigi is a commercial model, so I don't know if I have to pay you for being on cam now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome. <laughs> Hi, Janine. The Harley-Davidson Street 750 is designed for urban riding, which means the ability to stop and go and weave in and out of jam-packed situations well. It's got to be nimble, easy to manipulate, and be very responsive as throttling goes. Sitting down on the bike gave me the compact feel of a cockpit. Everything felt close to me, the angle of the tank, the handlebars, and this in relation to the foot controls, which are in the middle position, made the integration of elements seamless. This bike felt like coaching a well-trained basketball team. Despite its size, I felt like I was handling a smaller motorcycle. And here we go. It's uh, around 5.30. For, oh, I think it's almost six o'clock at this point. My maiden voyage on a Harley Davidson is in this mess. Power band is spread out and all usable. Tests show that 110 kilometers per hour in sixth gear equates to 4,500 RPM, which means there's an additional 3,500 RPM left before the limiter clicks. It's got 58 horsepower, but feels like there's more. And you can find it at the upper end of the rev range spectrum. It's quick. The Street 750 can hit 100 kilometers per hour in under five seconds. And it's actually faster than a Harley Davidson 883 iron. I'd give my hat off to the right of this bike. Now this is where I'm truly impressed. It's seated nice and low as part of what Harleys are about. I felt like I was in a car. While most puets will need some stretching or some sort of fidgeting style in their seat after a certain period of time, with the Street 750, the seat and suspension working together can get you very far without an ass ache creeping in. And if there's anything confusing about the bike, it's the muted exhaust. It looks loud, but it's not. It's a straight up bike, no frills, no ABS, no traction control. The gauge in typical Harley fashion has a speedometer and a trip meter. And looking closely, it's the bits and pieces of the Street 750 alongside the fact that labor is cheaper in India that make the brand Harley Davidson now reachable to a younger, newer market. That's the trade-off, it's the way it is. But don't worry, usually entry-level bikes are at the forefront in terms of making sure a customer's confidence is established with a particular brand. Call it um, first impressions last. If you're happy with an entry-level bike what more the higher models so it's in Harley Davidson's interest to make sure their more accessible bikes represent their brand and company well braking is decent single disc setup with a twin piston pin slide caliper oh, damn it <sighs> okay so let's talk about the heat coming out of this bike you're really only gonna feel anything when the auxiliary fan kicks in if the aux fan is off you won't feel anything at all and I noticed most of the air comes out on this side so there is a way around it if you're feeling too hot but you know for me it's tolerable what you can do is to put this leg down put this leg up then slightly avoid the air by making bukaka like so and so you won't be accused of seducing people on the street just put your elbow down here put your hand down here yeah James Dean Canabos yeah there are two paths you can walk when considering buying your first Harley Davidson. One, the lifestyle and culture that comes with it. And two, just the bike. Devoid of badge, bike group, or community sentiments. Okay, let's go to number one. Looking at it from the point of view of Harley Davidson's culture and lifestyle. If you are buying your first Harley Davidson bike, you will take into account what the community thinks about the product. Like it or not, one of the factors determining the value of a product is in that situation. First things first, let's settle the argument going around the internet between some diehard Harley fans. Is the Street 750 a legit Harley or not? If you research deep into the culture and lifestyle of Harley Davidson, you will understand where this question is coming from. I'll answer it right now. Yes, it's a legit Harley. How do I know? Well, there's a badge. Number two, I can buy it in a Harley dealer. And number three, Harley Davidson says so. Case closed. Now if someone says, yeah, but it sure doesn't sound like a Harley. If someone says that, don't even bother to argue. You can now quickly change the topic and start talking about Donald Trump. Yep, it's a Harley, but I agree. It doesn't sound like one. 
But you know what? Even amongst the US made Harleys, there is this divide among them folks about the difference in sound between the carbureted engines and the EFI ones. And frankly speaking, I think life is too short to worry about such things. Just ride the bike and enjoy it. Number two, the other way of looking at the Street 750 is through non-secular eyes. Imagine a bike with no lifestyle attached to it, no brand, no badge. A bike with a 750cc engine at a competitive price point performing really well. Made in India? Don't worry about it. I've owned some bikes manufactured in that country, a couple of Enfields, two Bajajas, and a Stella. In my opinion, those guys already earned their stripes into motor manufacturing. Short, not so, if you want to get into the whole Harley-Davidson culture and lifestyle and don't want to spend a ton of money just yet on a bike, then the Street 750 is for you, priced at 498,000 pesos. There is also the Street 500, which is priced even lower, so you got options there. Why did Harley-Davidson get into all of this? Well, I think they just wanted to address the issue of people who want to dip their toes into the whole cruiser scene, targeting those who start out with Jap cruisers. They were thinking, hey, if you're going to end up with a Harley-Davidson, might as well start out with one, right? Nothing is worse than a manufacturer claiming something like a bike handles well, yet behaves like a tugboat. Not the Street 750. You get what they claim. Harley Davidson set out design goals for this bike, and it looks like with my time with it and city riding as applicable in Manila, they achieved it with flying colors. Island Dream. So you got that going on there, and then a picture of Jesus here. Hi. 